Hello, I am Nikki, Dave's wife. I would like to thank you all for watching his videos. Please remember, if you like them, subscribe, share and comment. Dave doesn't have many friends, so you've all become his virtual friends, which makes him very happy. A couple of videos ago, I talked about an Adcom preamp that I acquired from a seller who stored his old belongings in a revolting trailer. There was also a CD player included in the deal. I wasn't that familiar with California Audio Labs, but after a bit of research, I discovered they made very high quality components. California based, they were founded in the mid 1980s, making just CD players at first and eventually branching out into some home theater gear until they are eventually purchased and closed down in 2002. This model was introduced in the mid 1990s and was $995 new, so it wasn't cheap. One of the first things I noticed that it has some weight to it, you know, some heft. Unfortunately, the seller though could not locate the remote. As you can see, it looks a bit rough, even after I cleaned it. And I did plug it in when I got home to see if it functioned, and I was very pleased to find out it did. But I haven't actually given it a good listen yet. I decided I'm going to clean it up and repaint the, the case. And you would think this is easy, just removing a few screws, but then I encountered some a rusty screw that I couldn't get out, and I had to resort to drilling it out in the end. Looking under the cover, I could see a sturdy CD transport, high quality components, and dual 18-bit Burr Brown DACs. It also has a useful coaxial output, and I even see a spot for an optional Tosling connector. Obviously, I want to uh, make this top look a lot nicer, especially get rid of this rust, big rust spot here in the front. And the sides don't look so hot either. After an extended period of vigorous sanding, I'm going to apply some of this rust remover product on here to, to get the last bits off. <laughs> so how does it look? It looks better. You can still see the texture underneath. Well, there was rust, so it's not perfect and pristine, like a brand new CD player. I don't know if I have it in me, if it's really worth the time to make the case look perfect. I know some people would find this unacceptable, but in my world, does it pass the five foot? Does it pass the five foot um, inspection? Yes, it does. Looks fine from a distance. <laughs> Just like when I evaluate speakers. I brought it in here and hooked it up to this system. Um, I'm using a, an old Yamaha AV receiver as a, uh, like a base pedestal for it. So here it is. It works. It's turned on. Um, now I need a CD to put in it. What am I going to listen to? Let me think. I have an idea. So at this point in the video, I'm going to share a little something about me. In a previous life, I worked as an illustrator for a couple of decades, and most of my work appeared in magazines, newspapers, books, and print advertisements. And as I said in a couple of previous videos, I lived in England for a number of years working as an illustrator. One day in the late summer of 1991, I was contacted by a member of the band, The Beautiful South. And uh, it was Sean, the bass player, and he contacted me because he'd seen my work in the, around, you know, in the various newspapers that he read. Anyway, Sean informed me that they were currently recording their next album, their third album, and 
asked if I would be interested in painting the cover of the next single that they were going to release called Old Red Eyes is Back. If you're American and have never heard of the Beautiful South, that's kind of understandable as they never really made much of an impact here, aside from with a few geeky music anglophiles. However, they were pretty big in the UK and Europe throughout the 90s. A few of you North Americans may be more familiar with the band The House Martins from the 1980s, and the Beautiful South formed from a couple of members of that band after they split up, and in particular the lead singer and main songwriter Paul Heaton. Getting back to the story, I was very happy to oblige the band and accepted their offer. This is the image that I came up with. Yes, that's me as Old Red Eyes with the spout and neck of a whiskey bottle for a head. Everyone was pretty happy with the results of how that turned out. So then the band approached me and said, you know, we'd like you to do the next album that's coming out in March of 1992. And what we need is one picture for each song on the album. So what I did is I, you know, came up with ideas, sent them sketches. And then when they were all approved, uh, which took, you know, a couple weeks, I, uh, went ahead and started painting the pictures. So at this point, let's just fast forward and let me show you what ended up being produced. Okay, let's uh, take a look inside. Right. 0898 Beautiful South. This is the album that we're talking about here. We'll scratch on the uh, cut on the plastic case there and inside is the booklet that I was commissioned to illustrate I had to do the I did the cover and for each song with the lyrics on on this page I had to have an accompanying uh, illustration so there's a we are each other there's old red eyes is back we are each other uh, the rocking chair, get some glare here, the rocking chair, um, we'll deal with you later, um, domino man, um, 36D, um, here it is again, um, What's this one called? Oh, something that you said. I mean, number one fan. Bell bottom tier. Um, you play Glockenspiel. I'll play drums. Uh, when I'm 84. And there it is. The uh, I think I got a credit on the bottom. Illustration by. Uh, David Cutter somewhere. Oh, there's the there's the cassette version. Now it's not nearly as nice a package because you had to remove this uh, insert here and unfold it, and uh, I guess it it sort of works, but it's not nearly as good as the as the CD booklet. Throw that aside. What else do I have? Anything else in here of interest? Oh, there's the seven inch sleeves for uh, We Are Each Other. Um, oh, here's the, you remember when you bought a CD, it came in a big giant box so you wouldn't steal it. You couldn't fit it in your pocket. So this is the, uh, the box. It's been flattened, but here's the box that they came in. Unfortunately, I no longer own any of the original paintings as a geeky music anglophile from Massachusetts actually contacted me and bought them all back back then. I mean, there, there are a few more details of the story that I'm going to leave out. But when the album was released in March, it was very cool to see my artwork uh, up in, in record store windows and on racks and posters and advertisements and magazines, newspapers. Um, I got to hang out with the band 
and meet some famous British celebrities backstage at their concerts. And overall, it was a really fantastic experience. So let's pop this CD into the California Audio Labs Icon Mark II and give it a listen. It functions flawlessly and sounds very nice indeed. You know, I haven't a beat it with my old Arcam CD player yet, or tried it with a modern external DAC. It's very smooth and punchy sounding, and online I could see people regard this model very highly and that California Audio Labs makes some excellent gear. I suppose I got lucky on this one. Good stuff. You know, these Harmony, you know these Logitech Harmony Universal Remotes are amazing. You can download the codes via a USB cable, and I haven't been able to stump it yet. Imagine the code is still available for a 25-year-old CD player by a long-defunct manufacturer. 